This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hi, everybody. Cheryl from Unleashed with my co-host, Jerry. Jerry, say hi. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. And Marty, say hi. And we'll all say hi to Marty. And uh, we just wanted to touch base today and talk about some very interesting things that Jerry and I uh, discovered, which we should have known, but... Yes, we should have. We should have. We didn't even think about it. Well, we don't think about it. You, you don't, especially, you know, obviously we're going to talk about the blood transfusions first. Right. Blood donors for our dogs and cats. Yeah, you know, they uh, it, it is just a fascinating subject. I never thought about it until you brought it up. Um, and then I did a little research, and here in Virginia, we actually have a, a rather large facility, Blue Ridge Vet blood bank not far from me maybe 20 miles who knew that's terrific and i think people should know of course you could always you know contact your own vet to you know i don't know if they do it not every vet might do it but no they they should have i'm sure you know in areas they have access i was just asking if even the shelters you know take blood from some dogs but uh you know maybe they don't I don't think so. It really is something that we don't pay a lot of attention to here. And it's something that I think that you can inform your listeners about. It's like a red cross for dogs. When you think about it, the red cross, you know, has blood drives to collect blood to send all over the country. But when we think about blood or plasma for dogs, we really don't think of a source that we would go to. Right, for, because in an emergency, yeah. you're not thinking, but no. it lasts up to 35 days, which I think is pretty good. They take either red blood cells and they take plasma. And when I... Well, when they I, break it down. They break it down. What normally vets will do if you have a dog that needs a transfusion for surgery, they go whole blood to whole blood. That would be like just the the blood from another another dog, and put the transfusion. So it's done at the time of the surgery. But the idea of these blood banks, canine blood banks, is to, just as you said, to separate it, to separate the red blood cells from the plasma and store it in case of Car you know, accident. Of Sur- it's for surgery. It's definitely for surgery. It is. And the other thing that I read up that I was surprised at is the transfusions are used for the parvo virus, I think they said. And of course, in the summer, that can be a challenge to many vets. They have a lot more dogs with that type of virus. I think, is that the one that settles in the heart? That heartworm, I was just, heartworm is is a horrible, it's a horrible. Yeah, I'm thinking that that, that's what that is. The cure is the dog has to be in a cage for like six months and can't, and can't move. I don't know how you could do that to an animal. You know, it's, it's worms that wrap themselves around the heart. Is that what that is? Yeah, it's, that's why you have to get, dogs definitely need to get, I think it's a vaccination or a shot or something. I mean, Well, heartworm medication. Yeah, I have there, Marty there, on heartworm There is a medication. lot of stuff out there. And, you know, as, you know, more dogs, you know, people have, people have multiple, sometimes multiple dogs, but there's a lot of animals out there. I mean, so, you know, diseases can be, I mean, there's been a couple of cases of, um, I don't know if it's rabies or something else with the, uh, with not the possums, but with um, the raccoons, raccoons, that they're acting weird. It's no. I, I, it's almost like a distemper, but you know, like they're out during the day and they're they look like they're drunk. Yeah, no, I I just know that here I I have a large piece of property. You can tell when an animal is acting strange, and that their behavior is not typical for the environment. And so you know when an animal really has that type of disease, if it's distemper or what what were you saying in um, rabies? Well, there was a rabies um, so, with a bat down here, and I love bats. You know, I'm all for yeah, well, bats. Uh-huh. You know, they kill mosquitoes. 
But down here, there was a, a bat that was acting strange, and the father put him in a bucket, and it turned out that he had rabies. And rabies. I haven't yeah, heard of rabies hard. in years. You know. I mean, you're but not I even like allowed to take pets out of the country. Oh, no, no, no. I never really looked into the canine blood donor type of thing. And I will, of course, Marty's too old. I yeah, mean, he's, he's too not old. a healthy dog. You have to be a healthy dog. You have to, you know, you certainly be a younger dog. Marty has his own issues. So not a good idea for an older dog, but young dogs can donate that blood. And you were right. They do it through the jugular vein. In the next 10 minutes, no pain. Yes. And, and they get just like people, because I used to donate blood. They get a treat. Uh-huh. Yep. They get a toy. Yep. They get a yeah. sticker. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, and in a few a minutes, thing. they, yeah, no, I think it's a wonderful thing. And certainly as a pet owner, and I've been a pet owner, a dog owner for many years, I never gave it a second thought. I know. Just but never gave cats it a second thought. Could you never, believe it with cats? You know, you know, it's amazing. Of course, the, the same would apply to cats, but you just don't think of it. And yet, I mean, I have been fortunate. None of my dogs have required major surgery, but I guess... Any dog that requires a major surgery would need a supply of blood. And, and they I have guess, 8 hmm? to 12 different blood types for dogs. That's fascinating. Oh, I didn't know that. They I have didn't know like that. our universal O, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which most dogs, if even if, if they're not an O, they could take it, but only once. And then they have the negatives and the positives. The negative, if you have a negative blood type, you could only use the negative. But I think what I read is if you have the positive, you could have either or. But, you Isn't know, they, they, they type you anyway. I mean, yeah. and if it's plasma, you know, it might not be a right. problem. But, you know, right. they say they use it mostly for surgeries. And, you know, right. of course, that's no guarantee. But, you know, if some yeah. some animals do need a do need blood, you know, especially well, if they've had, you know, they've hit by a car and they've lost a lot. So I yes. think it's terrific. I'm going to... I think it is too. And I'm going to put really it on put it. Um, the Facebook page, Unleashed, and, you know, uh, some information there. But And absolutely. And of course, most most of the time, this is totally voluntary. It's not like you're getting a, a monetary compensation. Oh, wait. For oh, donating some, some vets... We'll give we'll we'll give a monetary l- compensation uh, a, a discount okay. on future um, ah something. that wouldn't that be wonderful right. maybe if not you so have much the young, vet healthy, maybe the mm-hmm. place you're talking about to get people right. you know like to go to a Red Cross facility because right. you need a facility where they could do this of course most right. vets would be able to do it now. They would need to store it. That's the situation. That, well, I think that's the. I think that's the issue that many vets individually might not have the capacity to store it, and that's why it's not very well known locally, individually as a pet owner. That facility in Purcellville, Virginia, is a large facility, and it serves. I think they said something like three states: West Virginia, Virginia, and Maryland. And it is an all volunteer. You bring your dog in to donate that blood, and then they distribute that blood through different veterinary hospitals or veterinarians in a tri state area. So that's a, it's like a Red Cross for dogs. So they're actually storing the blood there. My vet is a local gentleman. He's been around for many years. He has a small office. uh, So he wouldn't have the capacity to store it. But it's wonderful. I think you should put it on that Unleashed page because people can check into it if yeah, they have young dogs. Yeah, they could always ask their vet. I'm sure their vet yes. will know. Yes, there are some. Ask. I could put the list down as well. Yeah. There mm-hmm. are some facilities like your facility, but there right. are some that you can go to. But, yes. I, you know, and we know about animals. And I found this out not too long ago, but who even thought of that? I know. I think it's a great idea, and I'm glad you brought it up as a topic for your show and uh, make people that aware that just, you need a, an awful lot of blood. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, they're a mammal, and they want to they want to save them. Oh, please, that's an and they show. have them at the, the parks. Show. All of these that, parks, show, I think we gosh. should look into that. Into you know, what? Well, well, you know, these zoos—they have to be 
on hand oh, with well, all those of this are, stuff. The zoos have the facilities, uh, hospital facilities, right. I'm sure, have you know uh, transfusions that are commonplace at those facilities. And I'm sure they have state-of-the-art equipment and probably have a supply oh, of blood on hand. Veterinary for, science for big animals and for zoos is is a godsend for sure. Yeah. They yeah. are very, very special. Well, and that's, I think that's are. where if anybody out there is listening and wants to know what to be, I think oh my that's, gosh, that yes. should be it. You don't need to be a cat and dog vet, you yeah. know, with a bunch of my old gosh. ladies coming in and vaccinate <laughs> and do this. You need like, well, it's exciting. It is. You know, it is. Especially now with uh, social media and Facebook. I mean, that yeah. giraffe kept me up for hours in the middle of the night waiting for her to give birth. Oh, all the baby giraffes. Yes, yeah, it I does. Know. Isn't that you wonderful know, that we can actually see it now? The cams, you know, they, uh, in fact, tomorrow I'm actually going to a wildlife center here in Virginia. They have an open house twice a year that they allow the public to come in and they give you a tour of the wildlife center. They bring in injured wildlife. So the last time I took my grandsons a couple of years ago and we saw beautiful eagles that were being oh, rehabilitated wow. and then they terrific. released them back. So the Waynesboro Wildlife Center does this twice a year that they allow the public in and and that is wonderful. But I also, and I'm sure you've done this, you watch the webcam that they put in in the nests then you can watch oh yeah the you know, eagles and oh, the falcons the eagles and the falcons or or any wild animal they use the webcam the technology today allows you to be right there and um up close and and see personal. nature <laughs> up close that is just phenomenal so for animal lovers this is great technology that we have now not when we were growing up it was so so difficult you you had to go to a zoo to see any animal now you can watch these animals up close and personal right. in so many different venues it's wonderful it's all wonderful all right we'll be right back after our sponsor okay sit stay We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. You know that feeling when you go to clean the litter box and it's a complete disaster? Yeah, we've got you covered. Introducing World's Best Cat Litter Zero Mess, the advanced litter that gives you two times better clumping and more odor control with less litter. Zero Mess combines the concentrated power of corn with super absorbent plant fibers. Translation, scoop once and you're done. Find it at a pet store near you and save $2. Visit www.saveonworldsbest.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. We're back. You know, when you were talking about, I just saw, I think it was online. I forgot mm. what kind of animal it is. I never saw this kind of animal. It kind of looked like an alpaca giving birth. I bet, yes. It and is. it came yeah. out with the head and the fur yeah. and the forearms first. Yeah. And she kept yeah. lying down, like, and uh, I oh, guess her neighbors in- came and looked. You know, she just, she sat down, she got up, she sat down, <laughs> and finally the thing <laughs> fell out. I mean, yep. and it's then he lied there, see- and everybody came and sniffed him, and she sniffed him, and uh, yeah. it was fascinating. Yeah. It is, it is, as I said, they it's They all it's give wonderful. birth very different. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And it, it's wonderful to, to be able to actually witness it with this technology. So it is good. It is good. Yeah. So I also, go I, ahead. I, I was going to tell you, I was going to give you an update on, on Marty. We're having such hot weather here. I'm sure you are too in Florida. Yeah. Hot as but, hell. I know, I know. So the pavement, he's having some problems walking. But I remember you were talking about the the pavement and people with their pets, you know, walking on the hot pavement. He really has a problem with his paws. So sensitive. I mean, he's got skin issues, so his paws are sensitive. So what are you what are you thinking for people? Socks, socks. I think you've said this before. Socks, socks is the way to go. Yeah. Socks. Socks sock in the grass on. and I guess very early in the morning and maybe, yeah. you know, uh, late at night on the grass. Yeah. But, you know, when you're on the grass, you don't know what's on the grass. 
I mean, no. here we could have fire ants. I mean, there's stuff all over. There yeah, are no, new you... beans and insects. And not that I love all of that stuff, but you know, I would. Well, I, I think would, the summer I would is difficult socks. for pet They have owners. socks with um, the rubber on the bottom. Right. Right. Yeah, they do. Oh, they. I hear you hear him growling in the background. He now growling. <laughs> I think he just wants a treat. He's not angry, but he's kind of making noise in the background. It's that time of day. Is it got to be close to late afternoon? He's thinking that it's time for a treat. But uh, uh, no, that I think. Look the who's training who. What's that? I said, look who's training who. I know. I know. He's he's so good though. He's had. <laughs> Oh, there he goes. Ah, there he Marty. goes. Hi, Marty. <laughs> he's got he the is. best bark. He does. He's got he's got a wonderful bark. Authority. And he's got it has authority. Just a, a sweet personality. Um, and as I said, he's had a hard time getting around lately, but we're doing the best we can. He's an old guy, and um, and we've got he him needs on a some, lounger. Some, he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a lounger. Yeah. But we don't take him out too much if it's very hot. His feet are very sensitive. And so I'm just being aware of that for him because I think that bothers him a lot. I, I, it would, they say if it's too hot for you, it's too hot for them. Yeah. I don't remember this as a kid walking my dog. I mean, we didn't really think about that. You know, isn't it funny? I don't know that we were that aware that it would bother them. I guess we felt that, you know, their pads were so thick and the skin was so tough that, you know, we really didn't give it much thought. But, but you uh, know, if you could get, and I'm sure they sell in, in pet stores for dogs, but if yeah. you have socks, you know, yourself, mm-hmm. some of them mm-hmm. have that rubber, um, you know, that, that, that slip, kind of you, grip, so you, don't you know, slip. Yep, yep, you yep, could just yep, cut yeah, it, you, you know, if it's too high and right. put like a little, uh, a little rope around it to hold it. And that's it. He walks yeah. out. I've seen these, you know, they put the dog's paws in shoes, like. They do give them shoes. There's like all kinds of stuff for them. And the dogs look like they're no, ice skating on <laughs> no, dry land because they want to kick them off. And, but then they get into it and they walk. Yeah, but it, it's yeah. so weird. But if it, you know, when it's hot, it's hot. I mean, and the world no, is no. getting warmer. So yeah, we have to is. come up with some things uh that, you know, that help our pets stay comfortable, for sure. And even sure. when you come in, if you could, you know, maybe, uh, you know, a cool towel to cool them down. But, you know, it's like walking on hot sand. Think about that. It is. It is. It is. You know? I'm trying to figure out what he's trying to uh, communicate to me. But I think that that bark was that he just wants some attention. I don't know. Because well, he probably that, heard and that's his name topic. and we were yes. talking about him. And maybe With, he yes, was feeling he, he a little insecure and why aren't he you did. looking at him? Uh, he did. We were talking about him. He heard his name and he wanted to add to the conversation, I guess. And that's probably uh, another great topic how our dogs communicate with us and they know how to communicate with us. Even after I, I don't have them a, a very long time. I only have them two years, but after two years, that's I know 14 I, years I, in his life. That's 14 years. In his, it's true. It's true. But after two years, I pretty much know what he's trying to tell me. It's a good bond. It's, it's a wonderful bond to have. I'm very lucky to have him. He's a good dog, and I'm a big advocate and for And he's lucky dogs. that you chose him. Well, he's, he's been a great friend, and I am a big advocate to adopt older dogs, especially as an older person. An older dog is just an easier dog. Many times, you know, they're already housebroken. They may have, you know, some issues that you need to try to correct. But for the most part, I think that um, an older dog for a senior person is a great asset. Just great company. One of my friends mm-hmm. said every dog she got at a shelter, she went in and said, give me the dog that's here the longest. That's right. And and Marty was two years, two years almost back and forth. Just in that amazing. Shelter. Just yeah. amazing. Yeah. It just amazes me that some people... Uh, you know, just drop off their animals because they need surgery. It or is. They're, going, I mean, it's, they're just it's the mind. most disgusting people. It's I, mine. I don't care. I'm, I'm sure nobody who's listening no. to us is one of them. <laughs> All right, let's take a break and then we'll come back and let's uh, talk about what we're going to talk about. We'll be right back. Okay, time to call off the dogs. We'll be back with more biting topics. 
right after we kibble a little with our sponsors. Does your dog itch, scratch, stink, or shed like crazy? Come to Dynavite for help. Order a 90-day supply of Dynavite. Dynavite is nutrition. Pick up two bottles of Lico Chops. Get the third bottle free. New improved Lico Chops with omega-3, omega-6, vitamin E. And now, six extra direct-fed microbials. Even better for the digestive tract and immune system. Try Lico Chops. Buy two, get one free. At Dynavite.com. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Hi, everybody. We're back, and we were talking about that. Everybody who's listening has promised to go to the shelter and get the oldest, oldest dog, the oldest yes. dog, and the one that's there the longest. And that's they will right. be so ever grateful. They because are the our most shelters grateful. are. There's just too many dogs in them because just uh, way too many. I mean, way you know, cats and dogs. It, it's just it's just heartbreaking. I mean, it is everywhere it you isn't. look. You know, this mm-hmm. one's having a rescue. That one's a rescue. They're dropping them off there. They're catching them um, on camera. You know, a yeah. woman letting out four of her dogs out of her car and driving away. Um, I mean, no. Uh, no. what kind of people are these? It's Where? Where was this? Somewhere. Oh. They get the license plate and then we shame them. No. But, no. you know, those kind of people, they just, their names should go on a board and they should never be allowed to ever have a I'd pet. Ever have any animal. Because There's there no are, question. you know, more people yeah. who are loving than there mm-hmm. are, you know, who are just oh, there certainly are. Pieces and of there, crap. There, you just think in the last, even just the last ten years, how many rescue organizations there are, how many people voluntarily involved in in rescuing animals and driving them and driving them from one state to another to get them adopted. I mean, really, that, there that's are, the greatest thing. There are some that people is. that that I, you know, I post some stuff for. Yes, yes, you that do. They just, you know, an hour and a half, two hour yes, ride. They it's, take different legs. It's, Absolutely, it's amazing. It, it really is amazing. There's so, a lot of organizations. There's a lot of organizations that have poodles, mm-hmm. that have schnauzers. Yeah, have yep. this one. Oh, that any one. breed you want, any breed, any breed you're interested in, you can find. One rescue organization that you can help and you can adopt an animal from, I think that is, it's just wonderful. And now, certainly with the technology today, with the internet, you can you can see, gee, I can drive, you know, 15 miles, I can drive 500 miles. However, you, you know, whatever's convenient for you, you can find animals that you are interested in all over, in every state, so... It's wild. Uh, it, it's it's, wild. it's good, and there there are always more good people. But there, so. but this, I mean, we could talk forever on our next show about this because it's yeah. it just never ends. So I want to thank everybody for listening. Keep up the faith. If you want to send us any message, you know, you could uh, send it to Unleashed Radio Show with Cheryl K. I'm on okay. Facebook, or you could uh, look at our line here and. You know, we just want to thank you and uh, we want Marty to say goodbye. And we want to tell everybody to live their life unleashed. We want Um, to thank Mark. And thanks for being here, Jerry. It's always good to talk to you. My pleasure. Great. Talk to you later, Cheryl. Bye-bye. Let's Talk Pets. Every week on demand. Only on PetLifeRadio.com.